Good morning. Oh, do I share it then? Oh, I'm here. Woohoo! Turn my mouse on. And of course, we know when we hear that music on a Thursday at 11 a.m., it's time for My Low So Lifestyle with Mary Shep. Today, Mary's telling us all about maintaining balance. Mary, what should we be doing? Uh, we should be going to farms. <laughs> I know everybody's sick of me talking about farms. Field but trip. It's summertime. Everybody turn it off. Let's go get I the know. car. Oh, my gosh. So I, I, I did. I totally, I went to... Um, some farms, I wanted to go to more, but if anybody is, you know, in the, our Illinois, Chicagoland, Michigan, anywhere in the middle of the country, we're all flooded. So rain kind of got in the way of me doing just about anything that I wanted to do. <laughs> so it's, uh, it, it put a damper to say the least on where and what I wanted to do that combined with the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm me and I'm chronically lethargic and have liver disease and a spinal issue. And um, as much as I want to go do all these things, sometimes my body says, yeah, I know you want to go visit six farms today, but it's not going to happen. But I did manage to go out and see two. I went to um, paddock farms and then there's a, um, a little farm stand um, garden thyme, Garden Time, Thyme, T H Y M E, in McHenry off of Justin. Okay. Um, All right. I also got a squirrel picnic table from Matt. He doesn't necessarily have a farm thing, but you can find him on Facebook. He's in our in our Farm Fresh group. Um, and he he makes so if you can picture a picnic table, but it's for squirrels. So when you mount it on your fence or your tree or whatever, and you put little nuts on top, it looks like there's a squirrel sitting at a picnic table. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're all over the place and they're adorable. So I stopped and got one of those. Um, but I, I had an absolute blast at um, Paddock Farms. They've, you know, like they've got, oh boy, someone forgot to turn down their phone. So it, it's, um, that what they, they had cows, chickens, goats, turkeys. Uh, they just got in pigs, baby pigs, um, and they have a full greenhouse of, you know, succulents and vegetables and hanging baskets. It's it's absolutely fantastic. So I had a blast um, meeting my and her husband over at Paddock Farms. It's up in Richmond um, off of 173, just, what would that be, west and south? So turn west of Keystone Road off of one on the south side of 173. It's absolutely fantastic little place. So if you want to go on a field trip, go visit them because they're wonderful people with a wonderful little farm and your little kiddos can um, actually play with and see all these little critters and creatures roaming around. And I had a cat following me for like <laughs> the entire time. I felt like I was being babysat by a little kind of tiny, like the smallest little cat I've ever seen in my life. But it was so much fun. So um, I did, and I'm planning on going to a few more and, and visiting more and as I get time kind of go through because the more I dive into this, it's, you know, it's been my norm for so long to know about farms. My father was raised in West Virginia and on a farm, you know, I used to go visit my family it wasn't necessarily barns and farm, but it was nothing but land and land and land. And we walked, you know, 40 acres from my grandma's house to my great grandfather's house. That's just all I've ever known. Even here in town, I grew up in McCollum Lake, but we would go to King's farm every week for milk and butter. And I just assumed that that was everybody's normal. So to grow up in this area and now as an adult realize how many people are so shocked by how many farms we have. It's like, how many times have you been pissed off because you're stuck behind a combine? Where do you think that they plopped out <laughs> yeah, of? Right. Oh, no. They, they, yeah, they, they just people just drive that to right. work now and then. I hate so. to tell you, but people don't commute <laughs> to work to go to Chicago in a combine. Right. It just doesn't <laughs> like the gas mileage is, you know, not there. So it's really interesting to me to, to seriously find out how many people are shocked that we have so many farms out here. And it really wasn't that, even I live in Cary now, and to get from Cary to Richmond 
to um, Paddock's Farm was... It's a, it's a bit of a drive. It's about, it was well, only it's like 25, 30, 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, about 25, 30 minutes. I, I live in Richmond. Right. So for yeah. you, it's, you could probably walk there. Oh, it's no, I know where they are. Yeah. Not that you would walk so, there, but... No, I wouldn't walk there because um, that's, you know, walking. Right. <laughs> You're doing your yeah. treadmill. That's pretty good. You're, you're, actually, you're getting your treadmill yeah, done. So it's I, not like uh, I, I, you're I, not I've doing stuff. I've been pretty religious about that uh, Monday through Friday. I don't do the treadmill on Saturdays and Sundays unless I feel so moved. Um, it's rare right. that I feel moved on a Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> it's, it's, but, I'm kind of that way lately. I, I took a few days off with the intent to do these things, but unfortunately... When you have nerve issues and spinal issues and all of these things, um, the pressure changes significantly affect me. So when all of this rain came, the first day I had off was spent battling a headache. And then the next day was battling flare ups because it changes the pressure and everything in your body and causes all this inflammation. So I wasn't walking too good. And then the, the sun finally came out yesterday. So yesterday I was when I zipped up and, and made my errands and, and got some vegetables and visited some farms to, to have some fun. And it was absolutely fantastic. I loved everything about it. Cool. Yeah. Yesterday was actually pretty nice. It was not too bad. Out. Beautiful out. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful out. So, man, you got a lot of folks out here already saying, Hey, there's Nora oh. and there's and Stephanie. Stephanie. Yeah. And my dad. Hi yeah, dad. Wow. Look at that. So, um, so yeah, no, it was, you know, and, Crystal Lake mushrooms, they're, so there's a thing called cottage law, and that's what most of your farm stands fall under. Um, cottage law says that you can sell your baked goods, your farm goods, your homegrown vegetables. So I could probably sell my low sodium products at a farm stand or a farmer's market. Um, but it's, there's rules around that, you know, how much you sell, how much you make, and you still have to be clean about it. But once you breach a certain point, then you no longer fall under the cottage law. So if I started selling low sodium bread and everybody wanted it, and the next thing you know, I'm making 7,000 loaves of bread, they're gonna go, okay, you can't reasonably make that within your home kitchen safely for that, that size quantity. So now you have to shift to a commercial kitchen. Um, so there are a lot of these little places and that's what Crystal Lake Mushrooms falls under is, is that little farm stand type thing. So now I have, in addition to my fresh garlic, my fresh vegetables and fresh everything else, I have a source for fresh mushrooms and I got, um, they're called lion's mane mushrooms. They're these big fluffy white balls and it, it literally looks like something you'd hang in your mirror in like the seventies. It's just a fuzzy <laughs> thing. Huh. And the texture once cooked is is almost like a scallop. Huh. It's not spongy like a mushroom at all. But the taste is very mild. It's still a mushroom. It's not, it doesn't taste sweet like scallops, but it they're absolutely fantastic. And so now I'm addicted to that. Because, <laughs> you know, why not? Now I, I got 17,000 places to go for my mushrooms and my farmer stuff. But I love well, everything not? about yeah. it. Yeah. So it's. It it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. It's really kind of cool. It It is. And, you know, when you, that's where I was trying to think about what, you know, every time I, I go through my list of stuff of what I'm going to do on my show and all of these farms, the part of the reason I love the farms is, is that balance that um, the, the real food, and it's, if you watch my show and if you haven't, you can go back and watch some of the old episodes. I've talked about diets before and it's, it's no secret that I, I don't like diets. Um, diets, they're restrictive. It, it focuses so much on, it's like that glass half empty, half full situation. Right. Yeah. It's, it's so focused on what your restrictions are and what you can't have. You can't have calories or you can't have fat or you can't have this, can't have whatever it is. It's a bunch of no, no, right. no, no, no. And you feel like a little bitty kid. Right. So what do though, you do? You cheat. You know, yeah, you cheat. And you, even though everybody's a grown adult. You cheat. You cheat and you feel like, because well, you're grown and you want what you want when you want it. Right. So, and, and, just, and just like you said before, you have to choose a lifestyle, mm -hmm. which is hence the name of the show. Right. 
it's not a diet. It's just the way you choose to live and how you choose to put food in your body. Oh, there it is. I thought I was looking for my mouse. I know you oh. people on the radio can't see what I'm doing oh. because I'm just trying to find where my mouse was. I saw it. Oh, there it is. I found him. Sorry. Um, so, but it, it is because, and I know you can switch that perspective and say on the flip side of what I say and argue the exact opposite. And I understand that, but, right. um, I'd rather focus on the things that I, I can have and not the things that I can't have because in all reality, when you're me, the list of things that I can't have is, is really long. <laughs> like, like this outside of just the salt part of it, the, if you look at it from a restrictive aspect, yeah, I said it's, it's really, really long. So it's just depressing to me. And I get it. Everybody's personality is different. So some people thrive on that crap. Some people love Atkins or keto or vegan, vegetarian, whatever it is, whatever your choice or reasoning is behind those diets. The perspective of calling it a diet is the part that I don't like because it just it focuses so much on the the what you can't have in the the reminding you that you're fat or you're this or you're that or you're whatever. Yeah. When that shouldn't be the focus. No. So I, I just, I rather choose to say that I, I maintain a balance versus a diet, like a low sodium diet or a low sugar diet, low fat diet, low calorie diet. Mm -hmm. Because when you maintain that balance, um, you can focus more on the things that you can have because you're balanced. You know, it, like uh, I've said it before about vitamin C. Look at a vitamin C tablet it's like 600 milligrams, a thousand milligrams when in all actuality as a healthy adult, I think you need like 60 or 90 milligrams. They give you so much because all the other crap and filler and the fact that it's fake and man-made and whatever that you need 600 milligrams just so your body can extract what little bit it needs. And you could have just eaten an orange yeah, or an apple or anything else that yeah. there's so much stuff that you can have that has vitamin C in it. So it, it, it yeah. blows my mind. Yeah. And I actually even had an apple not too long ago. <laughs> so. It cracks me up when yeah. you say that, like it's uh, a, <laughs> like it's the, the accomplishment of the year. Like, well, well, you know, it's, it's going on uh, May, June here. And you know, I had an apple back in February. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was actually, this was in April. So, yeah, but you're, yeah, for me, that's a big accomplishment. Right. Because right. I just, I don't like fruits and I don't like vegetables. Well, that's what's so funny about, um, you know, that balance is when you, when you start to focus on it and it's, you know, so I've said this a billion times, track your food. You don't know what you're putting, you know, what to take out or what to do until you know what you're putting into your body. And it's, it's, it's just amazing to me how many people, you know, well, I, I don't eat salt. Bullshit. Bullshit. You, well, I don't use a salt shaker. That doesn't mean anything. Like literally <laughs> it's yeah. Now, look at the back of a jar. I can guarantee ketchup. Yeah. Just ketchup. If you're a ketchup eater, look at the back of the jar. You get a tablespoon, sometimes two, and it's anywhere from, you know, 180, 160 milligrams to, you know, three, four, 500 milligrams, depending on who made it and what it's made of. Yeah. And so to make it, I, I know I said this a long time ago in one of the earlier shows. When you think about um, restrictions, I always tell people to equate it, equate it to money because you're going to remember money and you're not going to remember milligrams or grams or whatever. So like with salt, if you think I have $2,000 to spend a day and I just spent 180 bucks on a tablespoon of ketchup, or I could have spent $180 on a steak, a full, like two servings, an actual like 12 ounce, nice big steak. Yeah. So I can either have a tablespoon of ketchup mm -hmm or I can have a steak. And that's where I'm talking about the balance. So even the picture that I posted for the event this time, which was the steak that I made the other night with, um, I did chickpeas and a tomato sauce with fresh basil 
and the um, the new lion's mane mushrooms on top. And that is completely out of portion because it was a full blown 12 ounce steak. And then, so it was, you know, half my plate is that protein. And then a quarter of my plate was the vegetables. And that is out of balance, completely out of balance. Hmm. And it taxes your body because it's, it, proteins are harder to digest, especially animal, especially animal proteins. So it puts a lot of stress on your kidney, your liver, and all of your digestive organs and your filtration organs. Um, So you're better off getting proteins from vegetable products than you are um, animal proteins, or you need to stick to animal proteins that are, you know, uh, a little bit leaner, like the fishes and the chickens and the the lean proteins that, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and I'm... (sighs) And I'm a red meat eater. So that's why it's so hard for me. And that's why that plate was so out of balance because I I try and balance so much more because if you give me a four ounce piece of steak, I'm just going to ask, I'm going to go up and get another one. (laughs) Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm just going to get Four ounces is that's a couple bites. It's not a. And and it's, it genuinely is what you're supposed to have. What you're supposed to have. Mike, Alex says, what is uh, your biggest question is what are your go-to pop tart? Um, back, you know, 30 years ago when I probably ate my last pop tart, it would have been the brown sugar cinnamon pop tarts, but so so 30 years ago was your last pop tart. It was probably close to 20 at least Monday morning was mine. (laughs) See, that's, and it was a SpongeBob strawberry pop tart. (laughs) For those of you on the radio, um, I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of Pete. But he is not SpongeBob. SpongeBob age. <laughs> He's definitely not what you would picture as you know a kid that would be in SpongeBob. But that is that. I love everything about that. No, but my wife found that. that she found a box, a big box of SpongeBob Pop Tarts on sale. Uh, I think they were like a dollar ninety nine, and uh, that's so funny. That's what I had. But uh, that was Monday morning. So uh, Wendy had said, you know, that there's some people that can't afford fresh food, fruits and vegetables, and some can barely afford any food these times. And I get that. And I, and we talked about that a little bit the last couple of weeks with all this farm fresh stuff. So a lot of times with, especially in the low sodium world, because for so many years, anything that was canned or frozen was bad because it was laden with salt. And that's not necessarily the case anymore. So there's a lot of options and not necessarily like uh, that's the sad thing is, you know, if you do shop at a food pantry and things like that, you're lucky to get what you can get, which somebody like me would be screwed because the only thing in the food pantry that I'm going to be able to eat is straight up red meat. Nowadays, because of the fact that much of the chicken is not brined because people want to brine it themselves. Um, I might, I might possibly get away with chicken depending. Um, but I can guarantee you that all of the canned goods and everything else. So I would, me personally, if I had to go to a a food pantry would be stuck with pasta, which in all actuality is not the greatest for you. Um, and, and rice, which is okay, depending on the rice that you get, but you know, someone at a food pantry, typically it's going to be white rice. It's not going to be a whole grain, good brown rice or something of that nature. And I, I, I wholeheartedly understand that. But what a lot of people don't realize is that with cooking, and it, at first I thought the same thing, like, holy crap, eating fresh is expensive, um, which to an extent is true. When you're first gathering the ingredients and such to cook fresh, yeah. It can be. But depending on the method in which you cook, which you've actually taught me this, right. if you cook for a period of you know you cook you're prepping for a period of time and you you package you freeze that meal becomes so much more cost effective it really does and actually a lot cheaper significantly than than going out and buying box stuff and that's what's and i get it like i know it's easy to say that it's easy to say you know when you're seriously restricted on funds and you're shopping at food pantries and you don't have the funds to go to some place like a Sam's club or a whatever, or this, that, or the other. Um, I'm, I'm just one of those resourceful people. And not to say, I mean, that sounds insultive that, that people who are on hard times are not resourceful. I've been on hard times. Like I, 
I've been there. Um, and it, it's, I've lived off of, you know, toast and stewed tomatoes for a solid week because I refused to ask for help. And it was just one of those situations. Like, it's not that I don't have a family that supports me. And my dad probably weeps hearing about hard times that I've been on because he's my dad. But at the same time, it was just, you, I was raised, you just got to do what you got to do. So sometimes, yeah. and it's not that I haven't asked for help because I have plenty of times in my life, you realize that sometimes you just do. But that resilience of saying, okay, I, me personally would be the one that says, I'm going to find someone to donate a $50 Sam's Club membership to me and go buy 15 pounds of potatoes for a few dollars. And then I've got mashed potatoes, scalloped potatoes, whatever potatoes, and I'm going to cook for a day and fill my refrigerator. And that's because, yeah. you know, after my husband's car accident and he went off work and then I got sick, it's not like we've been wealthy people. You know, right. and I, I, people see me now going to farmer's markets and doing whatever. And yes, I'm only cooking for me and my husband. We don't have a harem of children. And, but you can find ways around that, um, being able to eat real food on a, a more cost effective budget than yes. If you go to a grocery store and that's the problem, you go to a yeah. farmer's market, if you're picking the prime stuff that looks pretty and whatever, that's why it's so expensive. Yeah. You buy the tomato with the bruise in it or the big giant 15 pound bag of potatoes at Sam's Club. Yeah. You're going to get a couple where you got to cut some spuds off the side of them. It's just the way it goes. Right. But the food's still perfectly good. So still it, it just doesn't look right. as pretty. And, right. But it is perfectly fine and dandy. And I've been there too, been there, done that. You know, it's, I mean, at one point, holy cow. And I still love it to this day. Ramen. Yeah. I mean, 20, I think, what is it up to now? 20 cents a pack or 25 cents a pack? Ask me when the last time I had a bit of ramen was. Right. Oh, I, I, the but, salt packet alone. And ramen noodles uh, themselves, yeah. even authentic from scratch ramen noodles in a good place downtown, um, oh, typically yeah. have salt in them. It, yeah, it would probably shut you down. But, but So now yeah. to step back for a second and look at um, when you talk about cost effective. I did mortgages in finance for over a decade and how many people would come to me because they're on hard times and the things that they refuse to give up in sacrifice for a good diet was always mind boggling to me. I had one customer or client, you know, that, I said, you know, track your finances for two weeks and I'll see where I can help you eliminate. And she was buying um, when they were on sale, but she was buying uh, magazines and she spent almost $300 a month on magazines. Holy cow. But in her mind, it was like, oh, it's only $2. I get enjoyment out of it and I read it. And sure. in your, your yeah. perspective in time is that I read this for a week. You read it for 10 minutes, you put it on a thing and then you end up throwing it away and she didn't realize how much money she was spending on things um, and the things that, you know, we spend money on our cell phones, our cars or whatever. And you, a lot of people don't truly look at where they spend their funds and where they splurge. And I get it. You, you, sometimes you just need to splurge on things to be happy. And that is wholeheartedly. I agree with it. I do it myself. Everybody does it. And that I'm not here to judge people and say that they're spending money on the wrong things. But a lot of times it's, it's that perspective of, you know, my health is not as important as this, that, or the other, right? My Starbucks or my McDonald's French fries because it's easier and it's fast, and I'm exhausted and I'm tired, so I'm going to spend yeah, five dollars on McDonald's. And you just don't care right. sometimes, right? And, and that's a lot you, of times the case, you know. And I've got the body to prove that. And I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting. <laughs> I'm, I've I'm, been eating a lot of ice cream lately. <laughs> well, yeah, but even eating a lot of ice cream, you're still probably 98 pounds soaking wet. But oh, I wish. Yeah. But thank you. Well, anyway. Uh, but, uh, you know, yeah. And, uh, I don't know if you can throw this up on your, on the, on the, uh, panel, but Wendy asks, uh, uh you know, she says, if meat packing plants close because of this pandemic, what do you do? Uh, actually you talked a little bit oh, about yeah. that on last week's show. And that's and, how I got on the farm kick. Yeah. I put it up there. Yeah. So it, it's funny to me because part of the reason why I got on this big, this tangent about farms, the last three episodes was specifically because of that, that so many people are like, well, you know, send me messages because of my food pages and my website going, how do you, 
where, how come you're still baking bread? How do you have yeast? How do you have eggs? How do you have flour? Where did you find it? I had, you know, Wanda or not Wanda, Sarah from Wanda's yeah. bakery. Yeah. Um, same thing. Like how I said, if you need a flour hookup, I got a flour hookup. Yeah. And from Kim Nordine that was on my show, she, you know, mills her own flour. Now still, I still remember Best that. Best bet. Yep. That's so freaking good. She made me cinnamon rolls actually, the other day. I actually gave her a little shout out on Uncle Pete in the morning this morning because oh, nice. I found her card. Oh yeah. Sitting on my desk. And, but it, it wasn't for the bread, but I did yeah. mention that she makes some awesome bread in case people are looking for it to ask her about that. Too. Yeah. She so. made me, um, she brought me some, a whole tray of cinnamon rolls the other day to work. I posted about it, Ooh. but that's the thing is, is, so you talk about these meat packing plants, um, shutting down and it does affect things. But what I was actually just talking to Myra the, yesterday about this when I was over at Paddock Farms, um, it, so many people don't realize that we are right on the edge of the biggest red dot, dot of commercial meat processing, dairy processing. If you look it up and look at, up the USDA and see where commercial meat and everything is made, um, you're to the west of us, right in the center of the country, is all our pork and our pig and or pork and cow and everything and yeah. beef and you know Tons poultry and all of these things. Um, so even if those processing plants don't shut down or do shut down, that's why it's so, so critical to support the farms because Smithfield foods shut down one of their processing plants and the whole world freaked out. They didn't shut all their plants down. No, just they one. shut one down and it affected those large scale commercial meat producers because now they have, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of head of cattle or pork that need to go somewhere. And there's, you, you can't stop that train. Like it's, it's, they're born, they're raised, they're fed, they're yeah. moved, they're slaughtered, they're going, and that train keeps going. Yeah. And if there's no one to process that meat, the other one's coming down the line. So you, you have no other choice, but to euthanize them. So they were doing everything they could to sell them in any way, shape or form. But if you support a farm the entire time, Calc's Butcher and Crystal Lake, Hub Market and McHenry, yeah. they they never stopped. So you got to pay a dollar more. I, yeah, it's not that sig I mean, if you look at the total price on the pack, it's not that significant in so far as how much more you pay. It really isn't. The quality is the problem because people are used to, especially people who are on a budget, are used to looking at meat and going, I'm not paying $4.99 a pound. I'm going to wait till that ground beef goes on sale. Oh, and right there with you, my wife and right. I were walking through, I can't remember what store we were walking through, but we're looking at the beef. And I'm like, I am not paying $15 for a flat of ground beef. Are you right. nuts? Are you out of your mind? Uh, but I mean, the fact of the matter is we do exactly the same thing. You walk through, you see what's on sale and grab it and you grab it and, and you go and you throw it in the freezer to what you get at a butcher. No. Even hub market announced that, should we sacrifice the quality and go to a lesser cut of meat because of the pricing or should we stay with the high quality product that we produce that our customers want and let the price go up a dollar or two because of the, the quality aspect. And that's what you get so, so often is you're comparing apples to oranges when you have high quality farm raised whatever versus lower quality commercial raised where they're and, and believe me for those that are are upset about the fact that you know a cow gets slaughtered so you can have a hamburger the difference between a commercially raised specifically for that either dairy cow beef cow feed whatever you want it for or a pig or a bird versus like the cows that I just went and saw at Pack Farms that this little baby cow comes up and snuggles with me and loves me and is literally standing underneath her legs like a dog. Now I know it's not a dog. She knows it's not a dog. It's not their pet. Right. But she still cries when she puts them down. But they live the most absolute wonderful life up until their time, which is why the meat is so much better and so much sweeter because it's not stressed. It's not hormone. It's not whatever. And so the quality is different. And I get that you can't always get the cost that you want. But you can also, like Lake Geneva Country Meats, all of these places, they yeah. have packages where you can buy yeah. for reasonable prices 
a huge quantity of bratwurst or ground beef or whatever um, and store it in your refrigerator and you can get the cost down to the same thing that you'd find at a grocery store. The difference is, is now when the grocery store is empty, that farmer here up in Richmond or Hebron or Harvard, believe me, I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, we have 800 registered farms in McHenry County, just McHenry County, not the state of Illinois, not Wisconsin, yeah. not Lake County, not King County, not DeKalb, not anything. McHenry County, just our tiny population little square. just over 300,000 people, and yeah. we have 800 farms. And that's just the ones that are registered. Mm -hmm. That doesn't count all the little mom and pop places that have acreage that say, I'm going to get a dairy cow just so I can milk it myself. And McHenry County is not big no. geographically. No. It is not a big area. And and a lot of people mm. go, oh, well, holy cow, there's that many farms here? And do you have that many people in that little right. square? Yeah, we do. And so. it's, um, so yes, it, I'm not concerned at all, to be honest with you. It, it literally, the, the joke, especially like in our low sodium group that we have, where it's got like 15,000 people in it. And we and our admins have always kind of had this joke long before this all happened that if if the zombie apocalypse ever happens between all of us, because we all know how to cook, we all know how to can, we all know how to preserve food. And most of us know how to hunt or have hunted. And a few of them have property. So we're like we're going to start a train and it's going to be like a tournament Terminator movie where. We go from one house and we slowly pick up all our low sodium buddies and end up in Minnesota at a friend's house and we built a little low sodium commune because, well, and that's the thing, you know, maybe if I lived in a different part of the country or a different country, but knowing that even if I had no car that functioned, I could literally, it might take me half a day, but I could walk and hit six farms and pick up eggs and meat and vegetables and produce if I had to. Yeah. From where you are. And right. Yeah, yeah, you could. And it's not yeah. like I live next to the farms up in Hebron and Harvard. I live in Cary. Well, yeah. And I live in Richmond and like it's just the farm you went to. It's, it's maybe two miles from where I live. Right. You know, really? So maybe two miles. So a little over, uh, what is that? Uh, a little over 10,000 feet. So to walk, I'm trying, uh, so, I, I, I really should. But, Everybody's uh, probably watching me squint well, over here. Well, you I'm can kind of go ahead and these. squint. Go ahead and read some of those because uh, just a little reminder here: you are listening to yeah. My Low So Lifestyle uh, here on two one six the net two one six the net dot com. If you happen to be watching the video live stream, you're watching it through our Facebook page. And for more of My Low So Lifestyle, you can like. 216 the net you can follow 216 the net and you can share it with everybody else you can also find my low so lifestyle on the my low so lifestyle facebook page or by going to my low so lifestyle.com and you can find all the cool shows that oh, uh well because uh how many shows have you done so far you actually 22 23 i think we started the first week of september yeah. of last year yeah so i think it's crazy is, i know isn't it so, I mean, this is, yeah. You people are nuts wanting to listen to me for an hour, yammer on about food every week. I love it. And I'll well, keep doing it as long as you guys want to listen. But it just, it blows my mind. I, you people want to listen to me yammer on every day. You are one of our number one shows. Whoop, whoop, because I am fantastic. Yeah, you consistent. You you <laughs> you came up uh, from, you know, who the, who the heck is this? Who, who's, who's watching this? Uh, to starting to compete with a, a number four, number three show, to they cheated, they with know a number the mayor's show, and um, you know, <laughs> they hey, know our, our political figures. They well, great uh, show, great actually, show, and I love them. They are competing with you just because I think of who they know and and the guests that we've had. That and you're talking about the Your Home with Bremer and Jones show, mm -hmm. just doing phenomenally Good well show. for a brand new show. Uh, but uh, you actually have surpassed what's in your loaf. <laughs> Uh, What's in Your Loaf is still our number one comedy uh, show and still is is great. But uh, My Low So Lifestyle uh, <laughs> is consistently at the top of our ratings list here. So, so you're doing uh, a phenomenal job. Alex says, um, if you need it, I'll send you some rabbit meat. I hear it's a bit gamey. Rabbit meat is fantastic. Um, I My brain is mashed potatoes, so I can't think of the name of the dish. But there is a rabbit dish that is absolutely fabulous. 
Um, of course, true to my form, it's got a wine sauce and, you know, some vegetables in it. But um, so when you talk about balance, um, when you're diagnosed with a GI issue of, of just about any kind, a lot of times a doctor is going to put you on what's called an elimination diet. And I know I said it, I don't like this word, but essentially it's what I always say, track your food because they need to figure out what you're putting in and what you're reacting to. So when they do an elimination diet, they might find out that you have a gluten insensitive or gluten sensitivity and it might either be an allergy or it might be um, autoimmune, which is celiac sprue. So by doing that elimination diet, they can say, okay, you stopped reacting to this and you're doing way better. We should probably do an allergy test or do a little bit more of an invasive test and see how the cilia is inside your gut to see if that's what it is. It could also be Crohn's disease and it could be what I have, you know, there's a, a whole host of things. So when they do an elimination diet through the course of time, they have discovered that there's certain bland foods that just about nobody has a reaction to. So you, yeah. you cut back to just that, which is what I did when I got sick. I, I cut back to plain potatoes and plain grilled chicken, no salt, no season, no nothing, no butter, literally potatoes, and chicken. But uh, to be honest with you, I was so freaking miserable at that time. I didn't care. Yeah. I had, I mean, I didn't, I shouldn't say had, I still have liver disease, but I was holding on to seven liters of water uh, or fluid. You know, my liver just is just a rock inside my rib cage. My, my 95% of my liver is scar tissue. It's just a big giant stone up underneath my rib cage, mm. which if you've ever taken an anatomy class or anything like that and seen where the liver is and this big giant thing in your ribs on the right side, it, almost all of mine is, is, is garbage. So I, I, eating became no fun to me. So it didn't matter. It was shoving in my mouth. It's sustenance. It keeps me alive. It needs, I need to put muscle on. So I need to balance this, this, and this. That's what I'm going to eat. I'm on 17 different medications to give me the potassium and magnesium and all the other crap that I need. Mm. And that was it. So, but that's the same thing. They said, you need to, you know, limit your diet. And I was the one who chose to go full bore because they had already diagnosed me. So I didn't need to do an elimination diet to find out what was wrong on my insides. Right. But I wanted to, in order to add things back in to see how they affected me since my filtration system was so far damaged. Um, that was what made the significant difference. And that's how I discovered I was sensitive to nightshades. Um, that's how I discovered that tomatoes made my allergies worse because of histamine. Um, so all of these side bars that happened and I went, holy crap, I've literally felt like shit my entire life, but didn't know it. Yeah. You just figured if that's it's your the way normal, it was. If that's normal, then right. Hey, so, um, that, yeah. Wow. So yeah, I think I got your son. So now I'm on the Mary diet soon. Well, if you're going to be on the Mary diet soon, you might as well just start the diet now, Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no like no time like the present. See, right? Gary says uh Gary from Singapore says who will ever turn down a program about food? I am right there with you, Gary. I my husband yeah. probably wants to divorce me at this point because that's all I watch is either Science Channel, National Geographic Channel, or food. So it's either like oh, yeah. how the Egyptians did what they did. <gasps> That I've weird been, guy about aliens. I've been watching this. And when food. I do the treadmill, yeah. there's this little dude who does a tour. Yeah. That you follow along and, you know, you walk. I've been watching this guy <laughs> do this whole Egyptian thing. It's yeah. really actually pretty cool. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, um, but the, I, I, I wholly totally. And no, bland crap. Screw you, Alex. So he says he's going to be on the Mary diet soon. And, and his Actually, next comment was bland crap. No, I can tell you right Everybody now. Everybody that's had my food says yeah, it's good. It's it's free, except for the banana smoothie thing. Um, that wasn't a low sodium, less salt, bland thing. That was a you hate freaking bananas thing. Well, so was, that was completely different. Was, that didn't count. It was gross. But I, what, I, what I was about to say was that I've had a lot of your food and it's really freaking good. Like those egg bites? Oh my God. Not a lick good. of salt in them. And when you that, make them with farm eggs? Okay. And, so and also that um, that uh, pasta thing you made with the meat in it, I don't remember what that was, but you left two of those things here. I uh, ate one manicotti? and Kent ate one. Probably the manicotti. Yeah, but that was really good. Thank yeah. you very much, by the way. Yeah, so 
it's just funny because that's, you know, the doctors put you on an elimination diet to find out what you're reacting to. And it's amazing how many people have lived their entire life feeling like crap. Because if yeah. your parents stop feeding you peanuts because they discover you have a peanut allergy, but never go, okay, maybe there's more to it. And if your allergies or your symptoms are mild, but not gone, and they think, okay, we've, we've got it under control, we've maintained it. Well, what about eliminating it completely? And once I started tracking my food to discover what and find that balance, mm -hmm. um, I started discovering that, you know, things, I'm not going to give up cheese. I'm not going to give up cookies. So I found cheese and cookies that I can have and discovered that uh, like so when you're balancing food um and you you know you think of fiber and all this stuff but water 100 percent across the board you shouldn't drink anything but water i said you shouldn't not you can't but you shouldn't you should literally drink nothing but water your body every animal on the planet isn't meant to drink pepsi no <laughs> they're, they're meant to drink water it just happens to be really good and we are also not meant to drink milk from another animal no nah. we're just not which is why so many people are lactose intolerant uh, just and I, I i love i love whole milk right and i, I use I, actual whipping cream for my coffee at home when i put cream in my coffee right i rarely do and then again coffee so I, coffee I, is, coffee is my water it it is that's the truth. It is good for like coffee does have significant antioxidants and all that stuff. So it does have good things for you. Um, the problem is, is usually people add fat to it. So if you're on a keto diet and you're, you're maintaining that level of fat for a specific purpose, different scenario, completely night and day, two totally different things. If you are a person living on sugar for your energy or carbs for your energy, um, Adding most people add fat to their coffee, which kind of negates all of the antioxidants and the beneficial stuff in your coffee to begin with. Plus, it's usually loaded with caffeine. And one serving of coffee is eight ounces. It's a cup. And this is not a cup. It's closer to a cup and a half or two cups. Yeah, um, which so. is exactly. And the one I've got over here is probably about probably two, two cups, cups over yeah. here. And, and then you have four of them. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? This so morning, it's like, right. Exactly. This afternoon, I'll probably have four more. Um, but yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, but that balance, you know, water is, is number one, hundred percent. Once I started drinking more water and even now when I drink more coffee in a day than water, I feel it hands down by the end of the day, I retain more water and you would think that would be opposite. But because I have to filter out so much and coffee is something that you have, like, if you think of, um, if you, if you took a big tube and put a sponge in the middle of it and you pour six gallons of water in the top of it and watch it filter through that sponge to the bottom, that's essentially your, your internal organs. So when your internal bits are damaged like mine, it's when I say I have three to 5% of a functioning liver left, it's not like this little corner over here to the left is clean and free and that's the path in which that water can take. It means that whole sponge is a crusty old sponge that's been sitting on your sink for 10 years. And once you soak it with water, some of it kind of gets spongy and the rest of it still stays hard as a rock. So all of that water needs to find the healthy little bits of sponge. So if I put something in that water, like coffee, it just sits there as the bits try to find their way through. So now once they find their way through to the healthy part that can filter it, it has to take 10 times as long to filter it through and pull out all that crap, all those sugars, all those fats, all those processed ingredients. Um, so something as simple as coffee, it's got to suck the caffeine out. It's got, you know, those things. And then the rest of that. So in, in that cylinder situation or that example, you're just looking at, okay, it's going to take longer. Well, it's not like I have some reservoir in my side that just holds all this shit that it needs to filter. It literally circulates in your blood and it causes builds up, build up of this toxin in your blood. So now your blood is not what it's supposed to be of blood and plasma and, and white blood cells and all this good stuff. It's an oxygen. It's, it's all the garbage. And that eventually creates ammonia, which causes a stroke-like effect in patients, which is essentially what I had when I went to the hospital because I had an ammonia buildup in my brain. Wow. 
So if I overdo it or if you overdo it, just because you have a healthy liver and a healthy kidney and a healthy whatever, your body still has to filter out all that garbage. And yeah. that's what those organs are for. But as you get older, even if you're not prone to a disease or you're not me or you're not somebody else or you didn't have an injury or a drug problem or an alcohol problem, like if you put all those what ifs aside, just an average human being going through life as you get older, those things start to get taxed and worn and start to fail. So if you start to balance sooner, and it doesn't mean you can't drink or you can't have sugar, you can't have coffee, you can't have all these things, but the sooner you can recognize those balances, the, the more longevity you get out of all of your internal bits. And to be honest, I, I, I wish that there was a way to give people perspective of how much better you feel. It's insane. It, when when you do eat better, when you do eat healthier, it's even just the water, just the water. Because I've had I've gone through that. I've gone through different changes in what I what I can eat, what I can't eat, and all that kind of good stuff over the years. It you do notice a marked difference, right? And until someone experiences that, just saying it really doesn't mean that much because people just aren't going to get it. They're not right. going to know. And like forever. You know, I thought that, you know, I thought feeling full meant you kind of felt a little sick. Right. You ate to the point where, uh, like I don't feel too well. Day. Yeah. So I thought that's okay. Now I'm full. Now I'm done. I ate like that for years. Now I eat to the point where, okay, I'm done. And, right. and I don't worry about what's left. I also had that mentality of, oh my gosh, look, <laughs> this is what, this is all the food there is. You have to clean your plate. That's what we grew up with. Right. You know, the, they're the, the starving pygmies in China or wherever they are. Um, you, you, they would love right. to have what's on your plate. Well, then send it to them. Huh? <laughs> uh, you know. But, I'll, I'll uh, have a self-addressed uh, sealed envelope. Yeah. To you. <laughs> send it over. Yeah, there you go. But it's funny that we were talking about overeating because um, I made um, pastizio last night, which is greek lasagna essentially it's like uh um i can't think penne noodles kind of like masticioli noodles like just little okay. tiny tubular noodles with a greek seasoned um if you do it properly it's got lamb which is what mine was i got lamb from calc's butcher my fresh mushrooms from crystal lake mushrooms um and then it's got a bechamel sauce on top so it's it's just What's like that? a layered Bechamel like a lasagna. Sauce. Bechamel is, um, see, Pete, if you would have paid attention to our mother episode, <laughs> one of the mother sauces. No, bechamel is what you would make. If you made your own macaroni and cheese, the cheese sauce that does not come from a packet of powder right. would be the bechamel sauce. So it's okay. it's a, a flour and a milk and a, usually a little bit of cheese that mixes and makes a beautifully thick, cheesy Sauce. Okay. So see now everybody who's watching who didn't see the mother show. I know they gotta go knows, back and watch the show about mother sauces. So you can you make go. fantastic sauces without salt. I'm just saying. So it uh sounds pretty good. It but it is. It's it's essentially noodles and meat with a cheese sauce, which is essentially what lasagna is. So it's just the Greek version of, of lasagna is pastizio. Huh. Uh pastizio. I can never say it right. However, um you should probably not eat a third of a casserole dish of that. <laughs> <laughs> so my poor husband, if he's not sleeping right now, um, is literally suffering the consequences of um, overdosing on pastizio <laughs> from last night. I feel so bad for him. He's, he's not in a good way. He really did eat way too much of it. And it's a lot of carb and a lot of dairy and a lot of cheese. And of course he probably put 62 pounds of hot sauce on it to, to boot. So, um, but see, his, he eats like I eat. His though. internal guts are not happy about the level of, of cheese product that entered into his system yesterday. So, yeah, see, I have to watch the, but see, I don't, I'm not really lactose intolerant, but if I overdo on the cheese, I notice, Anybody, yeah, I notice. And that's, it's, you it, know, it, it's just not good. But so if you balance everything, protein, grains, fruit, vegetables, and fats, fats should be good fats. Um, look it up. There's about a million different variances in fats, but in other words, you know, stick to the good fats. Um, 
but your your protein should be a quarter of your plate, your grains should be a quarter of your plate, and then your fruits and vegetables should be half of your plate. <laughs> and I know Pete's going to have three carrots, you know, not a whole carrot, like the little square of carrot. <laughs> yes. And an carrots, eight ounce steak. Carrots should be squared, uh, combined with maybe three or four peas. Right. And I'm I'm literally mean. You know, like I'll eat peas. And I carrots. love peas. I will. I love peas. I, I do eat. I, I do like those. But in in compared to your chart there, the the protein quarter grains quarter fruits and veg uh, half. Yeah. Um, my plate's usually three quarter protein and a and and a quarter grain. Um, that's usually how I eat. And it, it's funny because. I mean, now I've learned to love vegetables, like even mushrooms. All my life, I hated mushrooms. It was more so a textural thing. And most of the mushrooms I'd always had were really earthy. And I just, it was just too much for me. Um, but now that I've learned to cook them, I absolutely love them. And they're fantastic. And we eat them three, four nights a week. We have mushrooms in our house. Yeah. See, I like mushrooms. We don't get them that often, but I do like them. Yeah, right. So it's it's one of those things that I've learned to love. But even with like grains and, and um, vegetables or even fruits, you know, like I have talked about roasting grapes with my vegetables and it's fantastic. It adds that sweetness to the bitter vegetables. That a lot of so people weird do. to me. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. But if you mix like a, um, if you do like a, a brown rice with some zucchini or something in it and you have that mild flavored vegetable, like a zucchini, versus a broccoli or something else that has that overpowering taste where someone like you who doesn't like vegetables and it punches you right in the face, you're like, I don't like this because it's freaking broccoli. But when you pick those milder vegetables and you can throw them in there or things that people don't think of like red peppers and, you know, sweet see, peppers like, and like stuff like peppers. that. I like peppers. I like peppers. Right. And I don't even really think of those as a vegetable. Right. Because I like cutting up a bell pepper, especially put in eggs or right. what have you or maybe a little bit of uh, tuna with a bell pepper. And that's the thing is and when I'm you find that balance, getting used to eating tuna and right. chicken more than the red meats now. So I don't like it, but we're getting there. But that's where when you start and you say, okay, I found this rice dish. Like my husband and I, I made a turmeric rice forever ago and we love it. We absolutely love it. So now it's our go-to. I make it all the time um, or a mushroom risotto which is technically a pasta, but, um, well, no, it's not. I lied about that. Risotto, arboreal rice is not pasta. I'm thinking of, um, orzo. Semantics here or there. Another t tangent on another day. We'll talk about 8 million different kinds of pasta, but you can you say, okay, I like this type of brown rice with a couple of vegetables and, and some, you know, cheese on top or something like that. And I'm going to scale back my protein portion and then now you've just shifted that balance to get more of the grains that are filling that you need to balance out your diet and a smaller piece of the protein and have a smaller steak or a smaller piece of chicken or whatever. And you can find that balance. And instead of saying, okay, I can't have this, I'm going to find something that I do like. And I'm going to swap it out and say, okay, now suddenly my plate did just become half grain, half vegetable and half fruit because it, it's not as hard as people think it is to do until you go, okay, you want me to put half a plate of broccoli? No, it's not going to happen. But when you think of it as something that you can make that you would like, like a pasta with vegetables or a grain with vegetables or something like that, then it goes, okay, you know what? I could probably do that. Or I'm going to eat a smaller piece of this and I'm going to have some watermelon for dessert. Or not. But Right. Or a baked apple. Now that I wouldn't be opposed to because right. I've, I've, you know, you, you gave me a couple of tips on baked apples and it turns out it's not bad. Right. It turns out it's actually pretty good. Right. Add some cinnamon and some dark chocolate to that baby. And you've got one hell of yeah. a dessert. Some whipped yeah, cream on do. top. You do. You do. Um, yeah. So good idea on you right there. Right. So now you, if you notice in that balance, in that food paradigm, whether you go back old school to the full food pyramid of, you know, dairy, which I, I don't include dairy because you're not, I'm sorry. I love cheese. I've said it. I'm not getting rid of cheese, but you're not supposed to, the, you're really not, you're not supposed to eat dairy product. It's, you can get your calcium, you can get everything um, from other fruits, vegetables, and meats that you're not supposed to be yeah 
drinking milk from a cow, but that doesn't mean that people no. are going to stop doing it. I certainly am not. Does your body even it. process that kind of calcium? I, I didn't it, think it did. If you, it, it has to be, again, it has to be balanced. Like calcium and vitamin D go hand in hand. Yeah. So if you live in your basement and you never see the sunshine, you need to be on vitamin D supplements because you're going to have some serious health issues. And see, that's why being a ginger gives me a superpower. <laughs> I need very little right. sun time. And open this curtain for three seconds and you're going to have a third degree burn and you'll be good. Um, Yeah. And I get all the vitamin D I'll need for an entire day. Right. And then that's not that that's actually true. Right. Uh, we we pro gingers process vitamin D at a phenomenally high rate. Same with me because of uh, my lovely liver. I have to be careful of, of the sun and, and things like that. When I was on all my medications, they actually warned me. They're like, if you've ever been tanning, you need a hundred percent stop. And I was out in the sun one day with my husband in the backyard doing gardening stuff. And I, I was full blown. I wasn't burnt, but it, for the first time in my entire life, he looked at me and was like, you, you look like you just came back from the Caribbean. I have never seen you tan. It completely changes the way your body processes things and the, the yeah. pigment in your skin and stuff. It was crazy. But if you look at those, that balance and that food paradigm or that balanced plate, um, the thing that they will never mention is salt or sugar. You yeah. do not need added salt or sugar to your diet, period. You just don't. You don't. And I do all the time. Everybody does. All the time. Everybody I does. Salt. Yep. I put, I do. I, I, now, since we've been doing this show, I have changed that a little bit just because now, after spending, you know, an right. hour a week with you, I, I'm more mindful of it. And so well, that's always my goal. You know, it's now I don't, I don't do near the amount of salt that I used to. I, I will admit that. And that, it's funny because I, I've never, even with doing this show, I would never set out on the path. Ooh, wow, we only got a, three minutes left. Um, oh. I never set out on the path to, to be that person that was like, you can't have salt or you can't have this or you're a horrible person or I'm going to judge you because of how you eat. The whole point and what I wanted to do is, is make people aware, pay attention to what you're eating, pay attention to the label, pay attention to what you're consuming and what you're putting in your body. And you're going to be better for it. And even if all you do is go, okay, I've got two options of mustard. And because of me, you flipped it over and looked at the back of it and said, Hey, holy crap, this one's 400 milligrams of sodium. And this one's 70. I'm going to go with the 70 milligram option. And then you get home and find out, hey, it still tastes just as good. And if it doesn't, you live, you learn, you move on, and it's no big deal. But that's always the thing is to, to change that perspective has always been the point of this show. And to get people to try and balance things out a little bit more because you feel so much better. And once that's the turning point, mm -hmm. it, it's the same with people who when you finally lose enough weight, or you finally gain enough weight, like whatever your happy spot is and you go, holy crap, I never want to go back to what that was before. And that, you know, that happened to me. I, I right. hit, I actually hit 295 once upon a time and it, then doing the whole low carb, no carb thing. I came back down about 40 pounds, met the gouts, had to start right. adding a little bit more carb back into and easing up on the red meat then went back up a little bit in weight and then uh, about a month ago now got on a treadmill and now even though it's taken a long time because my knees kind of suck for, right that's a different story for another day sure on another show uh but uh i actually now i i'm at the point where i don't i look forward to going home getting on the treadmill and I'm up to now a mile and a half at three miles an hour. People are like, oh, wow, you're right. really, really fast. Well, you know, let me tell you, it started at uh, under a mile at one mile an hour on the treadmill. And that did not feel good. Oh, I can relate. But, you know, a month later, uh, I'm, uh, I'm doing three times as much at three times the speed. So I can see the progress on that. And that's the thing. And that's just to make people aware. And it's. It's not, you don't need to change your entire world, but to be aware of what you're doing 
it makes a significant difference. And that's that's the point is to try and help people find that that level playing field. So all right, how do people reach you? Oh, mylosolifestyle.com. Of course, you can check out my webpage. You can check it out on Facebook. Support the new groups. We got Fresh from the Farm, McHenry County, McHenry County Recipe Share. And then, of course, as always, please support the station. You support the station. You support me, 216thenet.com and 216thenet Facebook and YouTube channels. And we'll see you guys next week. Same great time, same great place, Thursday, 11 a.m. Oh, the sky goes goodbye. Goodbye.